Hi everyone, Randall Graham here. Today we have a video about cold wax. What is cold wax? Well, it's wax, uh, but you don't have to use a blowtorch to heat it up and melt it. And you can use that cold wax with your oil paint. In this video specifically, I tried to mimic painting in, in one layer, which would be used for plain air painting or a la prima, so one session. So. Honestly, I painted it indoors for the sake of the video being a little better quality, but I did paint it all in one sitting. So, you know, you can use this to maybe uh, find some benefits or a new direction in your oil painting, whether it's inside or outside in your, you know, in your studio or outdoors. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let me know if you have questions at the end and yeah, enjoy. So let's get started. For the sake of this demonstration, I'll be painting this beach scene uh, with some white and red striped cabanas at the beach. Uh, I'll be using lots of different tools in this demonstration. On the left, we have a glass cleaner with a razor blade, uh, a roller or a brayer, whatever you want to call it. I like using that tool. The next two are rubber spatulas that uh, are made by a company called Catalyst, but you can get cake decorating spatulas or, or whatever you like and that palette knife on the right. I'll also use me brushes and such. So, this demonstration is called cold wax painting and with an emphasis on plain air. Uh, you know, straight up, I'm um, being a little, uh, telling a little white lie with you guys. I did not paint this outdoors in plain air because I just have learned that the film quality doesn't turn out real great. So, I wanted to make sure you guys could see what I was doing best we could. Uh, so, I am painting inside my studio. And I will be mimicking that we're painting outdoors. Now, I will say that I absolutely painted this all in one sitting. Okay, so it's the same as painting outside. I just am inside for the sake of the camera here. So, one huge thing that I love about cold wax is being able to dig into layers underneath and add layers on top. So, the layering process is one of my favorites. So, this first little bit of the video... I'm actually using gouache, okay, which is a water-based medium. If you have no idea what it is, uh, it, it's basically very much like watercolor, but a little more opaque, but not quite as opaque as uh, acrylic. So another way to put it, in between watercolors and acrylics. I'm doing a quick underpainting so you guys could see that I drew some lines out for a quick little composition. You know, I put my horizon line in lower where I wanted the ocean to... Uh, kind of be lower so these cabanas that I'm drawing can stand out. And we're using the gouache to fill in. Now, I, I really do use this outdoors often if I want to do a quick drawing with some color because gouache dries incredibly fast. So, like I said, this video will be edited and we'll jump around uh, some different angles and such. But this first layer of gouache is mimicking that if you had an underpainting, um, which I highly recommend when you use an old, uh, cold wax. Uh, often I'll, I'll use old paintings that didn't turn out quite as good as I liked them. Or maybe after a few years, I say, eh, you know, this thing's not going anywhere. And I'll paint a uh, cold wax painting on top of it. This layer of gouache is kind of mimicking that, that we just want to underpainting uh, to dig back into. So you guys will see often uh, that even though I painted this sky pink, I'm going to paint it a different color, a low chroma blue. But I like how the pink will show through my, my finished painting. So you'll see how uh, that pink is really useful for this painting uh, the further we get in this demonstration. Okay, now that the gouache underpainting is done, let's start using our oil paint cold wax. So I'm squeezing out some titanium white, uh, some transparent red oxide, some cadmium orange. What else? I got ultramarine blue and uh, some gray, some neutral gray, to control the chroma, the saturation. I am using a little bit of liquid, okay? So that's a, a medium that can thin your paints. It's a little opposite of the cold wax. And then here's the cold wax, you know, it comes in a big can. When you take it out, it's kind of like paste, like glue, uh, elementary school kids' glue. Um, so you can kind of see where that all is on my palette. Now, before I even to dive into too much cold wax at all, I really still want to mix colors, okay? So, you know, little advertisement that 
all these things I do, you still need to be able to mix colors, draw, all the stuff. You want to be in control of your, your artistic fundamentals. Cold wax won't save you if you're not great at color mixing. But anyway, I mixed my blue, the, the first color I wanted to see. Um, and I'm letting a lot of that pink show through already, but I am basically coloring in my sky. Now, if you guys saw, I put a little tiny bit of cold wax in there. Really only... 2% cold wax compared to that big pile of paint. So I do believe in starting, you know, thinner with your layers of paint and continue to get thicker as you go, whether you're using cold wax or not. So as I start these initial layers, uh, you'll see how I'm adding a little bit of cold wax. And then right there, I just used a little mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits to dig back into that pink. And then I'm just kind of using my, my palette knife, uh, or excuse me, my razor blade scraper to add a little texture. Now, why I'm doing all these things as I continue to mix colors and, and build that initial layer, why I do things a certain way is I really like to have some sort of realism within my cold wax paintings. Often I'll use it for landscapes. I still have the intention for the viewer to kind of understand, understand what I'm looking at, the scene I'm looking at. Many uh, painters that use cold wax or encaustics or anything else, you know, really like the abstract qualities it can achieve, which I do too. I just really have a philosophy that, you know, landscapes can be very much abstract anyway. So, you know... The reason I did that little layering into the blue sky and then I put a little mineral spirits on it is because when I'm doing the first layer of a cold wax painting, really I'm just trying to get a quick little color note, tiny, tiny bit of wax, and I'm already starting to try and add texture. So a little game I play, if you guys want to take these, this video step by step, you know, my step one was drawing and putting that underpainted gouache down. Again, if you have an underpainting of oil, acrylic, anything, that is A-OK. -okay. My second layer, I'm using about 2 to 5% wax, and I'm mixing the colors I see with oil paint. You know, if I see the sand color, I'm using a little yellow ochre and white. If I'm doing the water, I'm adding white and blue. The sky is a little bit more blue and so on. I, I need to get accurate colors to get started. Then I'll purposely use different tools. Right now I'm using a brush. Uh, you know, I'll add a little odorless mineral spirits and wipe out with a paper towel. I'll use these rubber brayers. And the little game I play for step two as I'm adding the oil paint color is every five minutes I switch tools. You know, and, and you can notice how I'm switching my hand around. This is all for the sake of beginning to add a little texture. Even this first layer is creating interesting brush marks that can tell a story of how you spent time observing this scene. You can see here as I'm putting a little bit of extra layers down with the rubber spatula, and then I'm taking a, a paper towel and smoothing it out. Even that paper towel is adding a bit of texture. Here I'm even using a tiny brush to, to make sure my drawing's accurate. Um, as we're layering here, I'm starting to add a bit more wax here and there, and I'm putting a little bit of gray into the sky. So, you know, I just want to give you guys a brief of what I'm doing. I know the video goes a little faster. I will say I painted this painting in, in one session. It probably took me about four hours. So I sped it up to keep this video pleasurable for everyone. So it's about a half hour long. Obviously, you can pause, rewind, all that stuff. I will zoom in and out so you'll get a little bit better view of the textures and how I'm moving my brushes around as we go. But in the beginning, I really wanted you guys to be able to see how I'm mixing colors and adding very little bits of wax. Now, here's, you know, what I call step three, which is a little crazy. So after I organized everything nicely, I took that brayer and just purposely rolled it all over my painting. Why on earth would you do that? Well, when I consider using cold wax, I think the big benefit is that you can add layers of texture and history here. So that brayer purposely just lets me not hold my initial painting too sacred and makes a bunch of strange marks. Those strange marks could be a total mess, a disaster, and I don't like them, or they could resonate. And, you know, as Bob Ross would say, you could get a happy accident. So 
in that that step three, I really purposely mess my painting up, okay? That's the point where, you know, I pretty much do the same thing over and over for many layers, okay? Now, the difference between that first layer to maybe, let's say, the fifth layer is I am adding thicker paint and more wax, okay? So, as this rapid uh, video goes through and you see marks I'm making, uh, I really did want you guys to see the whole process of how I painted this painting. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, I'm going to keep adding things, taking them away, lifting them off, scraping them, flipping around, and continue to build. So, just keep in mind that's what I'm doing. So, let's change gears here of my voiceover and talk a little bit about cold wax overall. Cold wax is obviously wax, okay? So there's many different companies that make cold wax nowadays, but the big difference between the cold wax and an encaustic is that cold wax does not need any heat to melt or, or stick to your canvas, okay? So cold wax comes in a jar like you guys saw, comes out very paste-like, and it has some sort of alkyd in it. Um, different companies might use different alkyds, but let's let's say it already, a way to think of an alkyd is it already has some sort of mineral spirits in it. So when the mineral spirits evaporate, when you take that cold wax out of your can and start using it in your studio, outdoors, whatever, the alkyd's evaporating, the wax is staying. So that evaporation is what allows the wax to dry. Okay, again, in, in comparison to using encaustic, you know, which also uses wax but doesn't have the alkyd in it, you would be heating up your wax, putting a little bit of pigment in it, letting that wax dry or cool off and then dry. So, again, the so cold wax, you don't need any heat. You just pull it right out of the tube. Um, now, that does, you know, open up uh, some some guidelines, some rules, I would say. Um, you know, one, I think you really should use oil paint. I, I, I know some people use acrylic. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a scientist. I don't know what will happen in 20 years, but I think that alkyd, you know, probably doesn't mix great with water-based pigments. All right. Now, some of you might right away say, yeah, but you use gouache, but I did use that underneath. Okay. So the wax should be laying on top of that. Uh, you know, I wouldn't add the cold wax straight to acrylics myself. Now, I, when I say that, I mean, if you're trying to sell your paintings or, or give them as a gift or something or go into a museum or whatnot, you know, you might want to be careful with that alkyd mixing in with the crux. If you are just playing around, I mean, yeah, who, who cares? Use cold wax or the crux or anything you want all day. All right, so cold wax, we kind of got that. It comes out of a jar. It's got alkyd. It evaporates. It dries. Why the heck should we use it? What's what's the big deal about this stuff? Well, the benefits of cold wax is it can really add a lot of texture. Okay, so if you want a quick little bump up of getting looser and adding texture, cold wax is a great thing to try. I will say I you know, if you're very if you like realism or you're used to realism, I should say, um, you do lose some control. You know, that wax is very, very thick and it's hard to make, you know, very small straight lines. Uh, but you'll see, you know, if you watch how I'm painting that, you know, you can get around that many ways. Um, but yeah, it's much thicker. Another big benefit is you can layer it. Okay. So again, we're, we're, we're pre pretending I'm painting this outside at the beach, looking at this scene and I'm doing it all wet into wet. Most of the time, cold wax biggest benefit is painting a layer being patient, letting it dry, letting that layer dry, and then adding another layer on top. And you can do all the same motions and tool, use the same tools I'm using when you do that. It's just kind of letting paintings dry underneath. If you never have tried this yet, you'll, you'll be incredibly surprised how fast you're able to work with cold wax because the wax, when you add it to your, your paints, it actually gives you more paint. So, Another nice reason to use cold wax is maybe if you're a little stingy with your paint. I mean, geez, that stuff's expensive, right? You know, the cold wax kind of can double your paint really quickly, which leads you to be able to just kind of lay it on your canvas or panel, I should say, very easily. So a lot of times, if you like, you know, doing cold wax a lot, a lot of artists will have multiple cold wax paintings going at a time because... They really do kind of move quickly, and you're waiting for things to dry and layer on top and dig back underneath. So that's another benefit of, you know, the cold wax is just 
how fast it spreads out and how fast you can get some paintings done. So I have done many uh, plein air paintings with cold wax outdoors because of that reason. You can really spread it out quickly and get moving quickly. Um, one, you know, I wouldn't say it's a benefit or a downside, but the cold wax is going to dry with a very matte finish. It's not going to be very glossy. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. I, I tend to like it. It doesn't bother me too much. But some people, if it really bothers you, you might want to consider adding... Um, you know, another glossy uh, liquid or linseed oil or something. And, and you could technically varnish it, but you really want to wait a long time before varnishing. Um, I even, you know, I forgot to mention it in this voiceover, but I did have a little bit of liquid out um, to thin the cold wax. You know, when you're just using the thick cold wax in your oil paint, maybe that first layer of wax is too thick for your liking. Um, and I really do recommend kind of staying thin and continuing to add wax. You'll see as we get further along in this painting, there, there'll be times when I'm adding big chunks of just pure cold wax with, with no pigment in it. So I continue to build. And, and as this painting moves along, we'll zoom in a bit more. You guys will start to see how much texture I get. But again, I just wanted to keep the camera at a little distance so you can see the palette as well here for a bit. Um, so yeah, that's that's how cold wax is working. Now these tools I'm using, you know, they're great for kind of using them as a shovel, like this rubber pallet, uh, or excuse me, rubber spatula that we're using. See how I'm even like getting, mixing with it at times. It really works nicely with the wax because you can lay it on very easily. You can also take it off very easily. That's one of the really fun things. You can, you know, put a little spot of blue and it lays on top of the wax, and then you say, oh, I don't like it there. You can literally shovel that blob of paint off your panel and put it in another spot in your painting. And, you know, that rule of me using different tools every five minutes, I really use that for quite a long time. I'll keep switching uh, just because I like how I'll get different mark making the whole time. I do think one uh pitfall for myself and I, I do teach a lot any a lot of students um is when you're using a certain tool it, when you're trying to have really interesting brush marks if you keep using the same tool no matter how clever you think you're being that the every brush mark continues to look similar to the tool you were using so changing the tool is a nice way to just keep things kind of different you know without having to do too much thinking about it um, now, I mentioned a couple times that I'm using panel, okay? Another kind of guideline rule with cold wax is I do think it's uh, smarter to use a hard substrate. So whether that's a panel, piece of wood, uh, you know, foam cord, probably not great, but, you know, something sturdy compared to using canvas. Um, the canvas, again, if you are just doing it for fun, I, I don't think there's any problem with it. But if you're selling that canvas, uh, there is a kind of higher chance of your painting cracking with that cold wax. If, if the canvas uh, moves around a lot, the flexibility of the canvas could kind of crack that wax since it's, since it's such thick paint. Um, so, you know, I, I do recommend a hard substrate when you're working with cold wax. Now, wax itself, you know, cold wax or encaustic, wax itself is an incredibly old binder with paint. You know, there's there's encaustic portraits of, of uh, mummies of Egyptians and kings and stuff that's from ancient Egypt that's incredibly old and, and looks, you know, over, uh, maybe not like it's painted yesterday, but doesn't look thousands of years old. It looks really good. So wax is incredibly sturdy binder, okay, and it's been around a long time. So again, the cold wax does have that alkyd in it. It just kind of makes it more portable. Which lends itself to, you know, one, if you do want to try it outside, it can be very interesting um, and usable and you don't have to carry a blowtorch with the outside. But even in your studio, obviously, everybody doesn't have a studio where you can have uh, heated up torches. So, I mean, it, it can be a really friendly thing. Now, I would say some other things is I, I do tend to get much messier when I'm using cold wax. So, you know, use wear old clothes and all that good stuff, have good rags and you're doing a lot of wiping and cleaning of your tools, so I'm not using gloves because I just have been painting so long without them, and it, it feels strange to me, but not the worst idea to wear gloves either. Um, 
to protect your skin. Not like the wax is going to burn or anything. It's just the you know same old rule. You don't want to get too much paint in your mouth or anything if you're eating lunch afterwards. Uh, so yeah, be smart about it, staying clean. Uh, so yeah, that, that's some tips of our overall you know cold wax. What its use is for, its guidelines, some rules to watch out for. As far as this actual painting goes, now that we're zooming in a little bit, uh, I paint often at the beach. My, my uh, family goes down to Bethany Beach in Delaware. I live outside of Philadelphia in the suburbs, and uh, I love the beach. It's really one of where my heart is. I draw constantly at the beach. So I have millions of little sketches. So a lot of this is just born from uh, sketches, oil paint notes. I use that gouache I use today uh, for the underpainting a lot outdoors. Uh, so, again, I, I am painting inside, but this is mimicking if you could set up outdoors and use some of that cold wax. It, it's uh, very friendly to use outside. Um, this scene, you know, there aren't really cabanas with uh, red and white stripes in, in Delaware. Um, I'm sure there are somewhere, but not the places we go, my family goes. But um, that that structure of light, that red and white light hitting Getting hit by the sun was really what intrigued me with this situation. As I get further along this painting, I'm just going to start to worry more about, you know, bringing it home, finishing this up. So I'm worried about these cabanas. I'm not worried about them, but I want them to be the focal point. I kept the horizon lower uh, purposely that, you know, we've all been at the beach. There's typically not a ton of... Uh, things in the distance, so it's the lower part of land. So I kept them very low so they would stand off that horizontal beach line and be vert a vertical shape. Um, you know, they're, they're very high value with the white, but the chroma of the red stripes is also very strong. It's the most saturated part of this painting, those red stripes. Um, so I'm purposely keeping the sky a lower chrome of blue, a less saturated blue, or just more of a gray blue, if that makes sense to you. And when they're adjacent to each other, it really helps the high chroma stand out, okay? Now, wax itself does tend to decrease the chroma of your oil paint, I find. So know that, you know, I'm, I'm using that in a way to set up the chroma of these cabanas, now, here's a moment I wanted to make sure I could have edited this out, but I want everyone to see me mess this up. I'm trying to use clean wax to create like a fuzzy, soft edge layer on these cabanas. And if they were dry, I could have pulled it off, I swear to you. But I tried to do it a la prima, again, mimicking that we're outside, which I have pulled off before. And I just kind of lost it, that red and white mush together. So look how easy it is to scrape that off mush it into the sky, and now that muddiness, that grayness of the wax and the mess up is actually benefiting my painting. So that's what I continue to talk about these, this process of putting a layer of thicker wax and pigment down, scraping it, seeing what's underneath, and building again. We're, we're still all in that step three of me doing that until I like how things are looking. So you know, I play this game the entire time I'm painting. If I like a section, eventually I do like to just leave it be. For instance, if I like a certain spot of pink and the shape of that pink coming through the sky, I try and leave it alone. If I don't like something, I have to change it. You know, I know that's a big idea, but basically I could scrape it away. I could add a new color. I could add more paint. I could redefine. I can do something if I don't like it, and, you know, that's a very, it can be scary to work that way, but if you get used to it, it's really fun, as long as you think of it as, um, you know, kind of timeless, you know, that you're not going to know you really are in love with something until you love it, okay? So, it's more like a baseball game. We got nine innings, hopefully it goes smoothly and quickly, but we don't know. It could technically take a long time. Now, there's other times you're just hitting everything right, and it really doesn't take too long. Um, but I, I, I would say, the more you practice, I typically, you know, two, three layers, three to five layers, I'm typically fairly close to being satisfied. But that's absolutely after practicing and doing a lot of different paintings. 
And here I'm adding a little bit more of that mineral spirits right out of my jar, which is can look gross. But why you can do that is it, it that mineral spirits does eat away the wax quickly and your pigment. And I can dig right back down to that initial layer of pink gouache, okay? So again, the whole reason I did that gouache was so you guys could see that you can dig back down. Uh, so this process, again, you know, the like I was talking about a minute ago, you know, you can really have a lot of fun, but you don't know how, what you're going to like until you like it. But you can also, you know, within being a painter, you're, you're kind of a little bit of a sculptor and a little bit of an archaeologist. You know, you're digging what's underneath and you could be surprised. So, again, if you got an old painting that you, if you really don't like it, you know, give it a try painting this, a new painting on top using this wax. You might be surprised how those mistakes that you hate right now, if they become the underpainting, they might just become absolute magic and work with a recycled look. Uh, this last little bit here, I am adding pure wax to the top of the sky to get more texture. So that sky, remember its job was to be lower chroma, which you can see at the beach sometimes when it's hazy out in the summer. It's kind of light but gray you can feel the heat and the texture i'm adding i mean in that flat sky that big plane of color that's not too you know there's not a lot of action going on the texture becomes vertical composition lines that you know can keep the viewer's eye engaged in that composition where i really don't have too many things you know i got the beach a little bit of water the cabanas the sky it's not a lot of action so there's subtle little texture lines can can be a very you know sophisticated composition to to engage the viewer. Uh, at the end here, I do want to kind of get those cabanas how I like them. I'm using that spatula to really get control of straight lines and sculpt my paint into the right spot. So again, you're a little bit of a painter, a little bit of a sculptor with this stuff since it's so thick. Uh, but you'll really get some enjoyable results the more you play with it. I will say that me. Personally, I, I do like using this wax for some beach paintings because that, that fuzziness of the wax, the, the chroma dropping, the loose texture, I, I do feel like it can mimic the, a memory. You know, that thick paint of these cabanas, it's not so obvious, uh, you know, what it is, but it feels like the beach. The colors and shapes feel like the beach, the light. I still have control of the light and drawing and and all the things I need. Here I'm just digging back in to redefine those red stripes. It's very friendly with the wax. But I like that memory, that nostalgia that can be created with this looseness. So, you know, although I, I don't always use cold wax, I paint, paint plenty without it. Uh, when I do break it out, I, I really do like that feeling of memory and nostalgia. Um, you know, whether you're doing a beach scene uh, landscapes, even figures and stuff, you know, that looseness can invoke that for the viewer. So that's why, I, you know, that's my intention when I break it out often. Uh, again, obviously, this is just how I do things. Uh, there's lovely, tons of great artists that use wax, uh, cold wax for abstract layers, and, and you can just create such a infinite level of variety of textures that it's really enjoyable so here's some close-ups of all the textures we created through that process remember again this was all just four hours a la prima to mimic the plain air so it can give you you know very interesting little poems within your your big uh, book of a uh, story of a painting here's a little cleaner picture when it's all said and done with better light on it so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I do teach a lot. If you're if you're out near Philly, uh, come see us in person. I do some online stuff, but you can find out more about me at randallgram.com. And I'm on uh, social media on Instagram at, at randallgram. So I hope you enjoyed, and and feel free to ask any questions. And, I uh, yeah, give it a try. Try some cold wax. You have nothing to lose. You'll like it. Thanks. Bye.